After some time away, we're back with another episode of LXBN TV. Once again, this is Colin O'Keefe for LXBN, and joining me today is Cynthia LaRose, attorney at Mince Levin and author on the firm's blog, Privacy and Security Matters. Today we're discussing an, an always popular topic, one I see a lot, the relationship between Facebook and their privacy settings. Uh, specifically, we're talking about a recent settlement between Facebook and the Federal Trade Commission. You know, starting off, Cynthia, what exactly did Facebook do to, to draw the ire and, and this ensuing settlement with the, the FTC? Oh, they they were very, very bad. They they got their hands slapped in a big way, Colin. Um the the settlement, this is this has been, you know, anybody that follows Facebook um or has been following Facebook knows that this has been going on now for some time. Facebook, um, if you're a Facebook user, even if you're a casual user, not a power Facebook user, you would know that Facebook has been changing its privacy settings off and on over the last few years, mostly as it gained users, as it you know exploded with data and information and trying to find a way, quite frankly, to monetize all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the more it collected, the more it wanted, you know, kind of like feeding the beast. The more you, the more it got, the more it wanted, the more its advertisers wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, the FTC has been had received several complaints about these practices, and this complaint was the result of these these various uh, consumer complaints and consumer privacy advocacy group complaints that it received. And the settlement agreement, you know, basically goes through about eight um, eight bad things that that the FTC alleged Facebook did and that that they wanted fixed. The first one was the privacy settings. Mm -hmm. um, not only did the FC, FTC allege that Facebook kept changing the privacy settings so the users couldn't figure out what really was going on, but they they actually were deceptive, according to the FTC. They were deceptive in how those settings were being changed. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed as though they would, like, they, they set up this, um, a while back they set up this thing called a privacy wizard. Mm -hmm. And um, the FTC said, yeah, well, that's okay. But actually what you were doing was within the privacy wizard, as people were trying to set certain settings, the guidance you gave them wasn't really what it was doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was, you know, that was bad. The FTC, the FTC said, mm -mm, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, it said they made, it alleged they made unfair and deceptive privacy changes. Rather than telling people what they were going to do, they just sort of did it. Yeah. And as they did it, I don't think they were counting, Facebook wasn't counting on the power of the community to sort of call them out on it. Mm -hmm. And almost every single time they did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Facebook would make a change. People within the Facebook community would realize that something was going on that they weren't really sure what had happened. And before you knew it, there was a big backlash on the community. Mm -hmm. So the FTC pulled that out as well. Um, application access was another one. You know, if you use Facebook at all, you know you get all these requests, all these requests to you know play a game, add an app, download this, download that. Um, Facebook was had a policy, had a stated policy that said they made sure developers were using the the applications and that the applications were being screened in a certain way. Mm -hmm. They weren't. Apparently, there was basically no screening for the developer apps. Mm -hmm. um, so the the FTC the FTC said bad on that one as well. And there were a few others, but you know, they basically surround um, sharing uh, how they how they were the lack of disclosure and transparency to the end user. I mean that's that's the big thing that comes out of all this. Transparency um, and disclosure to the end user, to to their consumers was was lacking. Um, in some cases it was downright deceptive. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly it. The funny thing about Facebook is that there's two sets of consumers of their product. There's, of course, the consumers of the website itself, and then the consumers of that information that Facebook is collecting and then passing on to other people. Um, so that's right. So Facebook's kind of balancing those two things. But, but following up on that, what are the most impactful parts of this settlement between Facebook and the FTC? And then, you know, what does Facebook have to do going forward? Well, uh, you know, those are those are two really good questions. The first one is that they have to clean up their act. Mm -hmm. um, they were they were you know they're no uncertain terms. There's no you know there's no the FTC doesn't have any power to Im impose any fines, but they do have this power of you know the regulatory authority to say uh, this is what you must do. You must um, reform your privacy practices to make them clear and unambiguous. 
you must provide advance notice to users of a change uh, in the stated privacy practices, and you must allow them to opt out in a very clear and straightforward manner. Now, um, just today, I posted to our to our firm's blog about um, a letter that came out over the weekend from um, a bipartisan letter from members of Congress to Facebook saying, you know, okay, you've reformed so quote unquote reformed your privacy practices. Tell us why your new privacy policy is longer than the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> yeah, there's it's, it's so understand. there's still going to be some work going on here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, obviously, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of responses and lots of different responses to the settlement. And then just to, to Facebook changes as they go forward, you know, you know, what kind of responses have you seen? Has this been well received, poorly received? And, and is the settlement and, and the actions that Facebook's going to have to take going forward, is this something that, that its users should be happy with? Is it, is it what users wanted to see or do you think it, it doesn't go far enough? Well, I think a certain, there's a certain, you know, you can take the Facebook community into the, the, yeah, this is really important to us. We didn't expect that, you know, things that we, you know, we posted on here would be shared with the world or advertisers so that they could spam us. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the group of, hey, hey it's free. Yeah. <laughs> it lets me keep in touch with my friends. It's free. What do I expect? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it, as, a, as a whole, people are happier that they may be getting at least some notice um, and that Facebook is um, has to be a good citizen, mm -hmm. um, and, and and you know sort of behave properly in the online space. I, I think people, generally speaking, the user community is happy with that. Yeah. Um, you know, for for businesses that are that are looking at this settlement, thinking, well, what does this mean for me? There are several things. First of all, Facebook ha is subject to independent audits for the next twenty years on its privacy practices. That's a real cost. That is real money. It might not be a fine by the FCC, FTC rather, but they have to go out and hire somebody. They can't do it internally. And they have to submit that audit report to the Federal Trade Commission every two years for 20 years. That is a real cost. Um, the other thing is the settlement also goes a little bit further than some of the FTC consent orders in the privacy space in talking about future um, development, what their pipeline will look like, and how they need to work privacy into their product pipeline. That's about the closest we've seen, other than the FTC's, you know, um, consumer privacy paper last December that we're still waiting for further iteration on. But that's the closest the FTC is getting to actually telling someone you must start thinking about privacy by design. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. for for businesses that are starting up. They really need to take this seriously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not one of the yeah. It's, I mean, something that Facebook has to focus on. I mean, they're they're everyone lauds them for looking so far ahead with their product pipeline and, and implementing features that people may not may not be comfortable with now, but may be comfortable with in the future. But it's, Facebook has to think about these things like, well, how how do we take into effect you know privacy laws and privacy regulations? So that's very exactly. interesting. That that's going to be in there going forward. No, that's exactly right. And and privacy by design is. That that's becoming a very big, um, much bigger than we expect than than we've seen taught discussed here in the U.S. That is a very big point of discussion in the European Union, mm -hmm. and for businesses that are going online that are global immediately, right out of the box from the day they turn on the switch to go live, privacy by design should be something that they're taking very seriously and thinking about, and thinking about it with their developers and with their product people, and and working it into the roadmap. Because that's what's going to be expected. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. It'll be it'll be very, very interesting to watch. Thanks again for your time, Cynthia. Once again, this is Cynthia LaRose of Mince Levin and Privacy and Security Matters. You know, Facebook's attitude towards towards user privacy is an issue that's always going to be discussed, going to be constantly evolving over the next few months, years, and even farther than that. So for more on this story, be sure be sure to check out privacyandsecuritymatters.com and of course LXBN.lexblog.com. Thanks, Cynthia. Thanks, Colin.